Hey there, this is Anthony from Deselect. In today's interview, I'll be talking with Elliot Harper, one of the world's leading experts in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Now, amongst other things, Elliot will be talking about what it means to be a Salesforce MVP, and he'll also be explaining about an add-on that he's been working on for Salesforce Marketing Cloud, and it's called Scriptly, and it will allow you to make more personalized content for your emails or other content pieces in a very intuitive way. Now, besides that, of course, we talk a lot about targeting and segmentation and how to manage data in your Salesforce Marketing Cloud. What I think is really interesting, though, is that he focuses a lot on how you should keep evolving and experimenting beyond your initial implementation and how that also means you will sometimes make uh, mistakes and have to learn from these. So I hope you find this piece of content uh, valuable for you. Um, of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In fact, do that right now, and then you can get similar content after that. Thanks, and enjoy watching. Hi, Elliot. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Um, I have to say, I did not expect we would do this interview here in what seems to be a farm in the middle of the Netherlands, but <laughs> either way, great to have you. Um, so, could you perhaps uh, tell a bit about yourself or viewers? What do you do? And could you also elaborate a little bit on what it means to be a uh, Salesforce MVP? Sure, yeah, so I've been working with uh, Marketing Cloud for gosh, seven years now. Um, today, uh, I really do a mix of things. It spans across technical architecture development and also technical training. Uh, you know, I love um, sharing my knowledge with others. So I think that's probably the most satisfying piece of my work. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as an MVP, so this Salesforce MVP, uh, it stands for Most Valued Professional. It's award um, given by Salesforce to recognize experts and their contribution to the community. Um, and uh, I'm just one of a few, I think four of us who really specialize in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Um, what does it mean to me? Uh, I think that uh, it's um, it uh, it's great to receive that uh, recognition for uh, my contribution to the community. Um, sure. And uh, yeah, yeah, you did say four MVPs. Is that uh, in Australia? Were you? From, no, it's or? it's worldwide. Oh wow! So yeah, that's yeah. quite a, a distinguishment. Quite quite a few. Okay. Just to say, not not so many. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So uh, obviously, you've done many, many, many Salesforce Marketing Cloud implementations. Um, but there's many more upcoming. What is your general advice for people who've just began that journey? Yeah, so I'd say that um, don't stop at the implementation. I mean, so many times that I see uh, that they go through the implementation process and they uh, go and attend the training and um, they, as an organization, they fail to evolve. Um, 12 months later, they're still doing batch send emails or still have the same journeys that they started with. Um, and Marketing Cloud is, is an enterprise level digital marketing platform. It's very powerful. Um, and, uh, but, um, you know, they just, um, I perhaps just get in a comfort zone and uh, you know, fail to, um, to progress um, mm -hmm. their, their knowledge and also how they're using the platform. Okay, actually I want to uh, go a little bit deeper into that. Um, uh, one model that's of often presented is like a maturity model, like your uh, marketing organization has to evolve. Um, um, now, I guess two questions here is like, do you also see you something like that, like that mental model and, and how can organizations better organize themselves and plan for that kind of stuff? Yes, I mean, that's my focus is in um, really optimization. So I, I do some implementation, but most of my time is working with existing customers, looking under the hood and seeing how they can really be using Marketing Cloud better. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so does that, uh, so to answer your question, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Well, yeah, um, I think you're saying that, yeah, looking under the hood of Marketing Cloud to see what you can do with it is, is uh, one way to make more use of marketing cloud in itself and just experimenting with it i guess is is, uh, is what i would take away from that but um you're saying that um don't stop at the implementation yeah. that's what you and, said right and you really need to um uh yeah immerse yourself in marketing cloud and and be ready to kind of take um uh, not take risks but um put another way a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor 
there was going to be a bumpy ride. Okay. Um, and uh, there was, uh, uh, you should have processes in place to ensure that um, you know, emails aren't sent out to unintended audiences and sure. have checks and balances in place. But uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, you need to um, encourage yourself to to grow and be a part of that journey. Mm. Okay, I, I, just one more thing I want to add there. I, I like how you pointed out that this may be my interpretation, but you have to be a bit willing to fail or anticipate screw ups. And I remember one story from someone at Salesforce Connections. Uh, these these guys were actually customers, and they also said things like, you know, you're gonna be having high bounce rates. You're gonna be emailing the wrong people initially. It's gonna happen. So it's better to be mentally prepared for that. Um, then yeah, just assume everything will go smooth. I guess. Yeah, and look, I mean, the um, you learn marketing cloud by making mistakes, and the biggest mistakes you make, the more you learn. <laughs> That's the truth. I've made yeah. many of those over the past years. Uh, yeah, as 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 have I. Uh, have I. <laughs> um, so, but actually, one of the reasons you're here is not just uh, the training. You're also uh, promoting this great, great product that you've made and. Uh, like we at Deselect, we've come up with the add-on for data in Marketing Cloud, but you've actually done this for content. Can, can you tell more about that? That's right, yeah. So it's a Scriptly, so it's a visual programming language that enables you to um, specify, uh, I guess, uh, programmable content graphically rather than textually. Um, so, you know, using clicks, not code, um, in, a, in an intuitive interface that's, um, you know, similar to... Um, educational applications that are out there um, such as Scratch uh, so um, yeah I look I, it's a problem that I've been trying to solve for several years now in uh, how can we empower end users of marketing cloud that is marketers mm. to actually create sophisticated content and it doesn't matter what platform you're on um, you have to go and write code Imarsis is ESL responses is you know, uh, RPL um, you've got uh, Marketo as Velocity, mm -hmm. uh, Marketing Cloud as Amscript and uh, Adobe JavaScript. I mean, so, um, yeah, that's the, uh, there is no, uh, no one's figured this out. Right. So that's the thing that I was keen to, uh -huh. uh, to do. And, and so rather than doing it programmatically, which, I mean, that opens a lot of doors, but not everyone has access to those kind of resources. You've made it intuitive so the marketers can do it themselves, right? Yes, this idea, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So. I know people who might want to use this. Uh, how do they get involved? How can they si sign up for this? We can't at the moment, so um, it's currently in the final stages of development. Be in App Exchange shortly, so um, just stay tuned and uh, um, yeah, there's a uh, check out uh, App Exchange in a couple of months and all right. And then maybe once the update is there, I'll make sure to also post an update and uh, put it on the, on our YouTube channel as That'd well. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, so another thing I want to, to ask uh, is that, um, well, except for the content data tends to be a struggle for the marketers. Do you have any very concrete tips there that you can share of how to better manage that and how can marketers wrap their head uh, um, around their data model, for instance? Not really, <laughs> um, you know, so, so this is a, it's a, um, it's a continuing um, uh, challenge and power down that exists for marketers and um, that I, I think that ultimately, um, you know, I don't believe that Salesforce is ever going to um, be able to address this easily in the platform. Uh, I think that uh, you need to look at third party tools um, to uh, um, you know, such as maybe using a CDP and doing the heavy lifting outside, um, that uh, it's, uh, you know, or, or even um, tools like OCD Select. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, um, yeah, I, you know, it's funny that I think many, market, what I am seeing consistently is that many marketers go and compromise their data segmentation because this is just, well, just in a too hard basket, you know, so they yeah. fall back to um, simple segmentation of going in, I don't know, um, like uh, filtering by um, uh, city or something, and oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, some basic demographic data. It sounds quite familiar. I've, I've seen this before that, um, is this the scenario you're talking about? Like a marketing team, they come up with this idea for a campaign, and then they realize they have to write a query, 
and it's just too hard for them to write and they just can't be bothered to do it and then they fall back to just sending a blast email. Yeah, but that's right, yeah, I mean there is an over-reliance in IT teams and uh, I'd say that's uh, a shortcoming with um, uh, Platform Today. Interesting. Mm. And, and you're referring to the, to the CEP, uh, obviously that's one of the new big announcements of Salesforce. Yes. Um, what, what should we be looking forward to there? Um, so, I mean, CDP has a promise to um, A, recognize this problem and uh, specifically um, empower marketers um, with data. But think of it like it's a database platform for marketers and that they can uh, perform uh, data integration, data orchestration, segmentation and uh, move towards a single customer view and um, really uh, also work with um, with. Uh, voluminous or big data mm-hmm. um, that uh, where you you have a persistent view of all the transaction history and this is something that marketing plan uh, marketing cloud um, and in fact any um, marketing platform simply isn't optimized to do built in a relational data model so um, exactly. I think that uh, you know this is um, finally admittance that marketing cloud isn't a silver bullet mm-hmm. and doesn't do everything out of the box um, that you may think it does. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's so true. Um, and often there's an expectation that's being created that uh, you get a product and it solves everything. Um, and, well, first of all, not, I don't think any product can do this. Uh, and even if you combine a lot, I think it it's probably has to do a lot with how you organize yourself around that. Uh, but just uh, then, we've talked about data segmentation. Do you see targeting as a different subject, uh, standalone? Because you didn't use the word so far. What are your thoughts on targeting? Um, yeah, I'd say they kind of go hand in hand. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the thing with targeting is being able to do so um, in a timely manner. So being able to go and uh, um, uh, segment is, is one thing, but uh, you know, it's um, you have to, be able to do um, uh, in uh, quickly, so without uh, relying on an IT team to finish going and writing queries, and uh, um, you know, otherwise it result in lost opportunities. Mm. And uh, um, I, I'd say that that's you know the main thing is that the, again, this echoes what I was saying before that um, the problem today is that uh, rely, this over reliance on IT teams lacks agility. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, this is certainly a problem not only for segmentation but also targeting too. And uh, actually, a- actioning, I think that segmentation. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to um, uh, overindulge and use too much of your time. I do appreciate um, like getting your view on these things. So one one thing I like to ask at the end of sure. uh, these these um, uh, videos is, uh, do you have any question for me? I'd be just curious to see what are the challenges that you're seeing your customers um, face with Marketing Cloud on a regular basis. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, I think um, the, the challenge, so I've not only done marketing automation in my career, I've, I've, come, I've done CRM and I've done a few other systems um, that you might see in architecture and, and it's a bit the same thing with marketing automation but more and that is getting organized uh, I think um, putting a good governance in place that's really tricky um, and actually it ties back to what you said earlier you said it doesn't stop at the implementation and I think that you sometimes customers they don't only think of the tool as a silver bullet they might also think of a certain partner an implementation partner and that partner might be the best partner in the world but at some point there needs to be a handover there needs to be a certain uh, buildup of knowledge and Putting proper governance in place with dedicated roles, I believe, is um, one of the ways to mitigate that risk. Great. Right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and uh, looking forward to uh, what else you will share with us in the future. Okay, look forward to sharing too. Thanks, Anthony. Great. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you found this content very interesting and that it provided some added value for you. If it did, don't hesitate to give us a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe to our channel because that way you can get similar interesting content later on. Also feel free to uh, post your questions here in the comments section and we'll be happy to answer them. Other than that, have a great day, bye.